Hello biology students of Seattle. My name is Ms. Craig and I work at Franklin High School and today I will be leading you through your lesson. So let's begin. So first off, you have now seen this um, slide every time you open up a PowerPoint for our lessons during the closure, so you're very familiar with it. Just want to emphasize again that you should be working at your own pace, right? We want you to continue to be engaged and learning during this time as best you can to the ex greatest extent possible. However, your health and your family come first, so please keep that in mind. Another important thing here is, like always in science, we always learn best when we're able to share our ideas with others, ask questions, and communicate our ideas with other students. So if it's possible, try to communicate with other people via text or FaceTime while you're doing these lessons so you can still maintain that social aspect of learning that's really important. And finally, of course, reach out to your teacher if you have any questions. All right, so let's begin. So this lesson today, lesson 3.2, is an introduction to the process of meiosis. Now, meiosis, you may have heard of it before, is a special form of cell division that results in gametes. Okay, so gametes are sperm and egg cells, so meiosis is the process that bodies go through in order to produce cells for reproduction, sperm and egg. So basically what we're going to be answering in this PowerPoint is how do we inherit our DNA? So in lesson 3.1, your last lesson, what you did with Ms. Fox was you learned a little bit more about our chromosomes and you also built a model set of chromosomes for that fictional um, organism called a cherwibble. And so what we're going to do in this lesson is kind of take a step back and think about where did those chromosomes come from in the first place. So for this lesson, we have three main goals. After reviewing this PowerPoint, you should be able to first Describe how DNA is inherited from parents to offspring during sexual reproduction. Two, you should be able to compare and contrast the process of meiosis, which is the form of cell division where gametes are produced, and the process of mitosis, which is the form of cell division that results in new body cells. And then three, you should be able to explain why siblings who have the same biological parents don't look the same. How can they have different traits if their DNA is coming from the same place? Okay, so you have seen this slide before. So in the last activity, you learned that chromosomes come in pairs. Okay, so for each chromosome we have, we have two of them. One comes from the biological mother and one comes from the biological father. This means that when the parents pass on only half of their chromosomes to their offspring in their sperm or their egg cells. Okay, so if we go back here, right, say this is the set of chromosomes for one individual. This individual, when they reproduce, will only pass on half of these chromosomes in their gametes. Okay, so what happens is an egg has half the chromosomes of the individual, so for humans this would be 23. A sperm also has 23 and they combine, they create a cell that has a full set of chromosomes. So let's take a closer look at how sperm and eggs are formed. Okay, so sperm and eggs are formed in this new form of cell division called meiosis. Okay, so in this very simplified diagram here, we start with one cell that has two chromosomes. Okay, these chromosomes are homologous to each other. You've learned that vocabulary word right now. Um, I'm sorry, you've learned it before now. So what it means is that these chromosomes have the same genes, but because one of them comes from one parent and one comes from the other, they probably have different alleles or different versions of those genes. Okay, so they're not exactly identical, but they do carry the same genes. So this cell is simplified because we've just got two chromosomes. Now what you'll also notice here is at this point, these chromosomes have been replicated. So each homolog is also attached to its replicated chromosome here at the central mirror. Okay, so what happens during the first round of meiosis is these homologous chromosomes will get separated. Okay, so one homolog will go to one cell and the other homolog will go to the other, each still attached to their replicated chromosomes. Okay, then what happens is the cells go through a whole nother round of cell division. Okay, so the cells divide twice and during this round of cell division, it's very similar to the type you've already learned about mitosis. So those replicated chromosomes get separated and pulled into each new cells and then the result is that now we have four new cells or daughter cells that each have half the genetic information or half the number of chromosomes as this original parent cell, right? So we started with two chromosomes in the original cell. After meiosis, each cell has just one of each chromosome. 
And what you'll notice, which is another very big difference from the type of cell division we've already learned about, is that these resulting cells are not genetically identical. Okay. So in short, meiosis is two cell divisions that divides homologous chromosomes to produce cells with half the cells, um, sorry, to produce cells with half the number of chromosomes as the original cell. Okay, so in comparing mitosis and meiosis, this is just a very simplified chart. So for example, humans, right, each of our body cells have 46 chromosomes. So during mitosis, this type of cell division you learned about way back in our development unit when we were trying to answer the question, how does a single cell divide into or develop into a complex multicellular organism? What we saw was that those 46 chromosomes are first replicated during DNA replication, during interphase. Then those um, replicated chromosomes are lined up along the center of the cell. Then they are pulled apart and separated into opposite ends of the cell until we have the formation of two new complete cells. And each of those cells still has that, or will have that full set of 46 chromosomes because we made a copy originally. Okay, so the purpose of mitosis was to form new cells for replacement, for growth, and for repair. Okay, so the goal was to make cells identical to the original. Now the purpose of meiosis is different. The purpose of meiosis is to make cells for reproduction, sperm and egg cells. And because those sperm and egg cells during the process of reproduction will combine with another cell, they only need to have half the number of chromosomes. So what happens during meiosis is again, that DNA is replicated during interphase before this process happens. So that's the same, again, those homologous chromosomes are separated in this first round of division, and then those replicated chromosomes are separated so in each new cell, we now have four cells with 23 chromosomes, if these are humans, half the number of chromosomes as our original parent cell. If you would like a little bit more information about this process, we will be learning more about it as the video goes on and in future lessons, but you can check out this short YouTube video here. You can pause if you'd like, and that just gives you a, a brief overview and an animation of this process of meiosis. Okay, so here's the deal. So we've determined that our DNA comes from the sperm and egg of our biological parents. Okay, and if you have siblings that also share this, both of the same biological parents with you, well, you've probably noticed, right? So our DNA comes from the same place, but our traits are different. Well, this doesn't seem to make a lot of sense because we've also now learned at this point in the unit that our DNA determines our proteins and determines our traits. So if our DNA is coming from the same source, how can we have such different traits? Okay, so these are the Hemsworth brothers. I don't know much about them, but apparently they're famous. Um, we can see they have different traits, even though they have the same biological parents. Me and my sister, same biological parents, and we have actually a lot of different traits, physical traits that you can see very easily. So we're going to think more about how this happens. So what's the deal with um, meiosis such that we can produce a variety of um, offspring and a variety of gametes? So first, each individual produces a variety of sperm or egg cells. Okay, so although these three men have the same biological mother and biological father, the egg, their mother made several different egg cells, father made several different sperm cells, and each of those were genetically unique. And we'll see how that happens in just a moment. And finally, during sexual reproduction, the egg from the biological mother combines with the sperm from the biological father to form a fertilized egg. Okay, so now we have that combination, right? The egg that was used to produce this brother is different from the egg that was used to produce this brother, and the sperm that was used to produce this one is different from the sperm that used to produce this one. So when they combine, you have a unique set of DNA that is used to form each of these individuals. Okay, so the first way that this process of meiosis results in variation or a variety of gametes is something called independent assortment. So in the very beginning, this very beginning step of meiosis, when these homologous chromosomes line up, um, so they're gonna line up next to their homologs in the center of the cell, but there are many different possibilities for how they can line up. Okay, so what we see here is just with these, um, these chromosomes here, in this round of meiosis, the chromosome, the homologs from the blue parent ended up on the left side, and the chromosomes from the yellow parent ended up on the right side. Now that is totally random and not predictable, okay? It's also just as likely that 
well, the yellow chromosomes could have let homologs could have lined up on this side, the blue ones could have lined up on this side. We could have had the yellow homologs for some of these chromosomes on one side, the blue homologs on the other. And so what happens here, as we can see, so when the this cell divides, the homologous chromo the blue homologous chromosomes ended up in one cell, the yellow ones ended up in another, and then these are our resulting gametes. Well, just one switch. Right, so just this pair up here was assorted differently, right? Assorted differently. They did not depend on these other chromosomes for lining up. Now what happened is when those chromosomes were separated, we've got a homolog from one parent and the homolog from another down here, and then a different set over here. So when we look down here, we can see very easily that the DNA in this gamete is different from the one in this gamete, different from this gamete, and different from this gamete. So that alone is one source of variation. Um, but if we actually zoom in a little bit closer in these, we'd see that even though, for example, these two look like they might have identical sets of DNA, they don't. Okay, so we're going to see another thing that happens during this process, such that we're actually, all of these gametes are different from each other. Okay, so what happens next is called crossing over. So actually this happens um, way back in the very beginning of meiosis when those homologous chromosomes line up. Okay, so we've got our homologs next to each other, and what can happen is sections of those homologous chromosomes can physically cross over each other and swap. Okay, so they will actually exchange parts of their molecules um, to create new combinations of alleles. Okay, so for example, I have this uh, penguin here named Pepe. Okay, so Pepe um, let's say Pepe cells are about to go through meiosis because Pepe needs to make some sperm cells to make some baby penguins. So if these are Pepe's one set of homologous chromosomes that he's inherited from his parents, okay, so for example, maybe this is the chromosome he got from his biological mother, this is the chromosome he received from his biological father, when they line up in the center of the cell during that first part of meiosis and swap parts, the result is that now, before that cell divides, for this set of chromosomes, he has one copy that is entirely genetic material from his um, biological mother, another copy that is mostly genetic material from his mother, but some alleles from his father, another one that is mostly genetic material from his father, but some alleles from his mother's chromosome, and then another one that is entirely from his father. So what actually happened is just with this one set of homologous chromosomes, Pepe now has four different possibilities of combinations of alleles to pass down to his offspring. Okay, so a whole new load of variation results from this process of recombination. So that is when homologous chromosomes exchange genetic information. Okay, and so then finally, after we've gone through this process of independent assortment, our chromosomes have crossed over. We have a really broad variety of different gametes that are produced. Okay, so each one has a unique set of DNA, even though they're coming from the same individual. So on top of that, when two individuals reproduce, it is completely random which sperm will fuse with which egg. Okay, so the process of fertilization is random. Um, so this here is a really cool image um, showing some sperm trying to fuse with an egg. This video here, if you would like to watch it, goes in great detail of the journey of a sperm cell um, and how it fertilizes an egg and what happens when the sperm and the egg cell actually fuse and then result in this new combination of genetic material. Um, awesome video. It does at the end say something about those genes determining the baby's gender. Gender is not a biologically genetic trait, so ignore that part, but otherwise it's a rad video and you should check it out for more information about what happens to that sperm cell on its journey to fertilization. Okay, so in summary, this is what happens in organisms during sexual reproduction. Okay, so we start with an organism that has a full set of chromosomes, right? It got half its chromosomes from one parent, half from another. In this example, this um, organism cells has a t have a total of four chromosomes, one, two, three, four. Now, when this organism goes through meiosis, what will happen is that individual, individual produce four different gametes, and those gametes will each have half the number of the original chromosomes. Okay, so let's say this is this gamete here, right? So instead of having four chromosomes, it just has two. And this gamete will combine with a gamete from a different individual, 
They'll combine during the process of fertilization, and then when that happens, you result in a zygote or a new cell that can develop into a baby that has now that full force set of four chromosomes. Okay, and then that individual can do meiosis and reproduce, and on and on and on. Okay, and this is how we maintain that same number of chromosomes in our multicellular organisms by dividing during the process of meiosis the number of chromosomes in half. So you get half from one parent and half from the other. Okay, so finally, right, there's a lot of new information to kind of take in about meiosis. Um, this video will show you, give you another kind of um, way to visualize the process. Um, this slide recommends watching from time 0 to 149. The video continues beyond that. You're welcome to watch beyond that. It just gets into more of the details of what's happening during each phase of meiosis. Um, one note about this is you'll also hear in this video the term sister chromatids. And again, that just means replicated chromosomes. That's the term you're, we're more familiar with here in uh, Seattle Public Schools. Um, okay. And then that's really the last part. So you could go and watch that now, or you could do your check for understanding and see if you think it would be viable to watch that video. All right, so here are our three main goals in the beginning of this lesson. So first, it was our hope that you would be able to describe how DNA is inherited from parents to offspring during sexual reproduction. You should be able to compare and contrast meiosis and mitosis. So hopefully the purpose of meiosis and mitosis um, how those daughter cells compare to each other, and also some basics of the process. And then finally, you should be able to explain why siblings who have the same biological parents don't look the same, even though their DNA is coming from the same source. Um, unless, of course, they're identical twins, and that's just because identical twins actually do come from one sperm and one egg combined. Okay, so your next steps. So there is an optional reading for you about this topic. It's called Reproduction and Meiosis. I think you might find it very helpful. You'll be able to hear someone describe this process and, or be able to read about someone describing this process in different terms. It has some new diagrams on there for you to see that you might find helpful. Um, make sure you finish up your worksheet or your notes page, whatever you're using to record your learning about this. Um, and then I will actually see you for the next lesson as well, lesson 3.3, where we'll dig into this process in a little bit more detail, and Ms. Fox will guide us through modeling this process using those chromosomes that we made in the last lesson for our Wibbles. So I've enjoyed learning with you today. Um, I hope you are staying safe at home and um, continue learning and doing your best. Thank you.